Hey, this is Jacob from MotionVFX.com and this is a quick overview of the M-Object 1.2 update. As you know, M-Object 1.1 introduced a significant performance boost when working with extruded text and SVG files. But 3D extrusion is just a part of M-Object's toolset. A lot of your projects will require using actual 3D models. Now, the problem starts when your scene's polygon count reaches a certain amount. And until now, scenes with about 3 to 500,000 triangles were usable on most machines. While this is an impressive result, we're happy to say that we've brought this to a whole new level. To have a better view of how fast it is, let's compare M-Object 1.2 with its previous version. Here we've got a fairly simple scene with a couple of objects from the M-Object model packs, which you can purchase from our website. The polygon counter indicates that we've got over a million triangles in our scene and as you can see we are running M object 1.1.2. So let's go back to motion and see how it runs. 10, 11 frames per second without a RAM preview, not bad. Now let's check it out in M object 1.2. The scene is exactly the same, so I'll just hit play. And you can see that it runs at 24 frames per second. A full 1080p project with over a million polygons rendered in real time. But is that it? Let's go to Motion's Preferences, disable the frame rate limit and see if anything changes. Almost 50 frames per second, that's 5 times faster than the previous version. Right, but we're using the new Mac Pro with ATI's dual D700 graphics, so you've got a true monster with about 12 gigs of VRAM. What about lower end machines? Well. Here we've got a mid-2011 3.4 GHz i7 with Radeon 6970 and 2 GB of VRAM. A fairly decent Mac. And the scene is already loaded, so I'm just gonna press play and... 21, 22 frames per second. That's two times faster than M-Object 1.1 on the new Mac Pro. Of course, the better your Mac, the bigger performance boost you will experience. You still need some free memory on your graphics card to store your M-Object scenes, so if your machine is equipped with at least 1 gig of video memory, our plugin will try and squeeze as much of your GPU's computing power as possible. By the way, if you're working on a lower-end workstation or a laptop, be sure to close all apps that are running in the background, especially the GPU-oriented ones such as Photoshop. This way you'll free up some additional VRAM and potentially improve your rendering speeds. Including the drop zone functionality in M object was a big deal for us. It introduced a higher level of customization and allowed us to create even more complex scenes. That being said, it wasn't exactly our fastest feature, so using more than three or four of them was nearly impossible. Well, we have addressed this problem in the 1.2 update and now you can use the same amount of drop zones as before and they will run at least 10 times faster than before. We've also changed the way they are supposed to be replaced, so you no longer have to type in their file path. Simply import your footage into Motion and drag it onto the desired drop zone source. And the neat thing about this is that you can drag any layer that you want here, even whole groups. Alright, time for some real life examples. And again, we really want to show you the difference between the previous version and what we have now, so let's start with M-Object 1.1.2. Okay, so here's our scene built using our free iProducts model pack, and five of them got drops on base screens, so we filled them with 1080p footage, and of course we've had to do that by typing in their file paths, so there's nothing else to do but press play. Okay, it works, but 2 frames per second is far from usable. So let's compare it with M-Object 1.2. Now we've got the same scene with the same footage applied and of course we're using the new solution which allows us to drop any layer here, but we went ahead and created a couple of motions drop zones, set them up as our sources, turned down their opacity so that they don't interfere with our composition, and dragged our footage directly onto them. So let's quickly undo this and see what's going to happen. Almost 30 frames per second, that's 15 times faster. Alright, but since this is based on a completely new approach to handling these elements, what's gonna happen to your existing projects? 
Well, no worries. Projects that already use at least one of mObjects drop zones will remain the same as before and all new ones will use our latest algorithm. There's one thing that we've missed in the mObject 1.1 overview. Materials. There are a couple of important changes there, so let's go over them really quickly. Firstly, you most likely remember that every newly created material had to be saved in your mObject library. And we've found it a bit annoying, especially when using temporary materials, which will never end up in the final scene. So right now you can add as many of them as you like, also by double-clicking in the materials section, and save only the ones you need by right-clicking on them and choosing save. Another new feature is this HDR influence parameter at the bottom of the material edition window. And it can be really handy in various situations, for example when most of your scene is lit properly, but one object stands out because the scenery lighting is making it too bright. Of course you could modify your lighting as well as your material settings, but it's not always possible. So now you can bring this value down a bit and the scenery lighting will have less influence on this exact material. A lot of us were really excited when Apple released an open beta of their latest operating system. And while it's great that they are open to our suggestions, lack of FX Plug 3 was a bit disappointing, mainly because that meant no support for mObject or any other FX Plug 3 based plugins. Luckily, the latest build addressed this problem, so we're happy to say that mObject can now be used in Yosemite. Alright, so that's all for now. Thank you for your time. Remember to check motionvfx.com for other great products for Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion 5. And see you next time.